Hey guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video. My name is Rebecca and if you're new here, I post videos all about luxury, beauty, lifestyle. So if you're into that kind of content, then definitely hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some different things to consider when making your first luxury purchase. So if you're trying to make your first luxury purchase and wanna hear my thoughts on how to make the right decision, then just keep on watching. All right, so it is no secret if you watch my channel that I am a huge fan and lover of luxury bags, luxury SLGs. My collection has grown quite a bit over the last couple of years, and to be honest with you, my wish list is like never ending. <laughs> so with that though, I feel like I have a little bit of experience in how to guide you on how to make the right decision for your first bag. So basically, I do have some notes in front of me that if you see me looking down, that is why I wanted to make sure that I touched on everything, that way you had the most information moving forward with your first luxury purchase. So one of the main things I'm going to be focusing on is luxury bags, not so much small leather goods, but you know, this could apply to small leather goods a little bit as well, but we're mainly focusing on bags here. So one of the first things you have to ask yourself and you have to consider is what is your budget? Because depending on your budget, you could be eliminating or including certain fashion houses. For instance, if you only have $2,000 to spend on a bag, then you're pretty much limited to luxury houses that are a little bit lower than like Chanel or Hermes. You know, Chanel, even the wallet on a chains are about 2,500 and that's not even technically a bag. That is a small leather good. It's a wallet on a chain. So, you know, if you have a limited budget, then of course you're gonna be looking more to Louis Vuitton, YSL, even YSL, some of their bags go for, you know, well over $2,000 and Louis Vuitton too. But especially with Louis, at least in my experience, you know, there's quite a handful of bags that you could get for under $2,000. So, you know, but if you have more than that to play with, let's say you had, you know, five or 6,000, then you are pretty much open to include even Chanel. And, you know, I'm not sure about Hermes. I'm personally not very interested in Hermes and I know they are very, very expensive, more than Chanel. At least that's what, I'm, what it seems like based on the very few things I've seen about Hermes. But, you know, you have to consider your budget. So that right there can, like I said, eliminate or include certain fashion houses. Next, what you really want to think about aside from your budget, because let's say you don't even have a budget yet because you don't know what you want to buy. You don't know what you want to save for. You know, you could always figure out what you want and then save for it regardless of what you might be able to buy right now. So the biggest thing you need to think about is what do you need to carry every day and what is the purpose of the bag that you're going to buy. For instance, if you are just looking to buy an evening bag, then obviously you don't need a Louis Vuitton Neverfull. You don't need a huge tote bag. You want something smaller, you know, maybe like the Gucci Marmont or the Chanel, you know, minis or the even the smaller medium classic flaps. Those are all great for evening. Now, of course, some of those can be used for every day as well. Personally, the way I look at luxury goods is that there is no rule on when and how you can use your bag. If you are dropping the several thousands of dollars to buy a bag, use it however the heck you want. If you get a medium classic flap, you can use that during the day, you can use that at night, you can wear that with sweatpants, you can wear it with a gown. So in my opinion, I think you should just use the bag however you want to, regardless of what people may say, you know. I have carried my Neverfull to the gym, I have carried it to school, I have carried it to, you know, work. I, I use it the way I, I want to use it. Now, of course, with some bags, there are, you know, like a Neverfull. I'm not going to carry my Neverfull to a wedding, you know, that's just what it is. I, I usually prefer to carry like a crossbody to a wedding versus a Neverfull. But the moral of the story is you can use the bag however you want. But what you want to consider is if you are looking for, you know, an everyday bag, especially because this is your first luxury bag, you know, at least when I was buying my first luxury bag, I wanted it to be something that I could use all the time. I was pretty dead set on the Neverfull and that's what I ended up getting. But, you know, now that I know more about the luxury fashion houses, if I had to do it all over again, I don't know that I would actually choose the Neverfull as my first bag 
knowing what I know now, but for how my lifestyle was back then, and that's the thing, this, this ties into what do you need to carry every day. Back when I first got the Neverfull, I knew I'd be going through college, which I was actually already in college at that point. Um, you know, I was working in an office, so I knew I needed to carry a lot of things back and forth with me. And I also was going between my house and my boyfriend's house quite a bit, so I knew I needed a bigger bag. So the Neverfull just made sense. A, you know, a crossbody bag or a classic flap, those weren't going to work for my life at that point. Now I'm in a little bit of a different situation and I've really downsized and I, you know, I live with my boyfriend now, so I'm not going back and forth all the time. I don't always need to carry so much. So that is one of the things you really, really want to think about. So if you are on the side of, you know, you go to the office and you carry a lot or you travel a lot, then yeah, you might want to look to a tote style bag. You know, you might want to look at the Chanel DeVille bags or the Neverfull bags or the Goyard St. Louis bags. You know, there's definitely a bunch of tote options. YSL has a tote. So you definitely want to look to, you know, the, those types of bags if you are one that, you know, you want this to be your workhorse type of bag. Now, if you are somebody that carries minimal things as your essentials, which, for instance, for me, I can literally get away with carrying just my toiletry, my compact wallet, and my keys. Now, I could even forego the whole toiletry pouch and maybe just bring, you know, I could bring my Advil, I could bring some floss, and I could bring just some hand cream or sanitizer. I could get away with just doing with these items. So in that case, do I need a Neverfull for this? No, I could easily get away with a, you know, classic flap, probably even a mini. I've never actually tried them on, but based on videos I've seen, you know, I can get away with just these items in those smaller bags. In my Gucci Marmont bag, I would actually still have room in my Marmont bag with just these items. So, you know, if you're somebody that really just carries around minimal things, then you don't need a big bag. You might want to look to a Gucci Marmont or the Louis Vuitton Croissette or, you know, the Speedy 25 is a smaller bag, but I have to say it holds a ton. Even with carrying like these things, my PM agenda, I still have room in that bag, but it is technically a smaller bag, you know. So it all just depends on the items that you want to carry every day. So my advice is if you can, take your essentials with you when you go to the different boutiques. I know some people are not local to boutiques so it's hard, but you know videos are very very helpful in deciding if what you carry will fit. But if you do have a boutique near you, then definitely go in and try your items on in the bag. I have never had an instance where I was not allowed to do that. Um, you know, in Louis Vuitton, even Chanel, when I was buying my card holder, the SA, I didn't actually like want to put my cards in it, but the SA brought hers out and she was showing me just how much she had jam packed in it. So, you know, but I could have easily taken my cards out and put them in there and seen if that's what I wanted, if that would fit my lifestyle. So that is definitely a big tip is to just take your items go to the store and try the bags on. You know, another thing that I always think too is trying the bag on, even if you don't put your stuff in it, but just trying the bag on can really make a difference and maybe sway you on a particular bag or not. You know, I can appreciate tons of different bags out there, you know, but do all of them suit me? No. Do all of them suit the style that I would want to go for? No, but I can still appreciate them. But, you know, sometimes you won't know until you go and try things on. You know, if let's say you really were dead set on the Neverfull GM, but you've never tried it on and you go in store and you might think, wow, this thing is huge because that's actually what happened to me when I was getting my MM, my first luxury bag, I was actually going in to get the GM. That's the one I thought I wanted. I had only ever seen it like in videos or, you know, maybe on people in passing, but I had never actually tried it on for myself. And when I did, I was like, okay, the, you know, my boyfriend was there too. And he was telling me how it definitely was really big. And now I do own the GM at this point, you know, years later, but I have it for a specific purpose. It's not my everyday bag. The MM really worked as my everyday bag. So again, you have to go in and try on a bag if you can. Okay, that was a long-winded way to say, you know, think about the items that you carry and also just try the bags on if you can. 
Next, another thing you want to think about is what are the types of bags that you currently use that are not luxury? You know, for me, before I had gotten my Neverfull, I was using tote type bags. You know, I was using Michael Kors tote type bags. I was using Coach. So that was the type of style that I was used to. So it made sense that when I was getting a luxury bag that I would gear towards a tote bag because that's, you know, that's what I was using. And, you know, this kind of also ties back into what you carry every day you know if you're somebody that always carries a tote bag then it might be a little bit of a shock to try to downsize in fact when i was using my neverfull and then i ended up buying the favorite mm back when that was still in production and i had bought it and i just felt like i couldn't fit anything in it you know i was so used to having my neverfull it was really hard for me to downsize in fact i ended up returning that bag because I was like, I just can't really fit anything in here, you know? Now looking back, I would actually love to have kept that bag because I do think it's a beautiful bag. And now at my current point, I could definitely fit my essentials in it. But it just goes to show you that if what you're used to is one thing and you try to go for another, it might be a little bit of like a culture shock to try to transition. So one of the things you also wanna think about with bags that you own is what are the features of those bags? You know, for instance, you know, you have your Chanel Classic Flap, that's a flap bag. Or you have your Gucci Marmont, which is a zippered bag, which they do make a flap version as well. Or you have your Neverfull MM, which is an open tote. What you want to think about is how are the bags that you currently use? Are you somebody that really loves to have a zipper closing your bag? Then that might eliminate the Neverfull. You know, you might want to go for like the Iena, or I think, I don't know how you say it, but it's like I-E-N-A. <laughs> Um, that has a zipper. It's basically like a Neverfull, but with a zipper. So you also want to think, you know, do you prefer to wear crossbodies? Do you prefer top handles? Do you prefer clutches? All of these things are going to make a difference. And in my opinion, don't buy a bag thinking your preferences will change. Now, I know this may sound crazy because, yes, preferences do change. However, for me, for instance, um, years ago, after I owned my Neverfull, that was always my first bag. I don't need to keep saying that. After I had owned that, I ended up purchasing a, I think it was a Speedy 30 or the 35. I want to say it was the 30. I bought the Speedy 30 off Poshmark, and I was like, I'm going to love this bag. It's amazing. I'm going to love it so much. I ended up hating it, and I ended up selling it because I hated that it was just a top handle. I do not like being tied to my bag in my hand. I can appreciate the look of it, and I think it looks great on other people, but when I'm out at the grocery store or I'm out shopping, I don't want my one hand to be just stuck to having to use that, hold my bag. And yes, you can put it on the crook of your arm a little bit, but it wasn't comfortable. Now, I do own the Speedy 25 Bandolier now, and that has a strap. So I can choose, if I really want the top handle look, I can, but I can also use a strap. Same goes with the Crosette bag that I own from Louis Vuitton. It has a top handle, so if I wanted to do it that way, I could, but I always just use the strap on both of those. I don't think I've ever carried either one of those as just a top handle. So that is something very, very important to consider because, like I said, when I purchased that Speedy off of Poshmark, I thought for sure I was just gonna love it and I wouldn't mind and that's just not what I was used to and it wasn't something functional for me. So if you're somebody that likes to be hands-free, then you might want to consider a crossbody because even like a Neverfull, you know, it's sitting on your shoulder or even other shoulder bags, you're not totally hands-free as you are with a crossbody because, you know, you have to make sure it's staying on your shoulder. You can't really, you know, you want to just be cautious of it. If you bend over, you know, it might slip off your shoulder a little bit, whereas with a crossbody, you can just set it and forget it, basically. You don't even have to think about it. Or even like a little backpack, you know, the Palm Springs Mini is is like high 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 up on my wish list right now I I think if I were to buy another Louis Vuitton whenever that would be that would definitely be my next Louis Vuitton bag and pretty much the last bag that I want for a while from Louis Vuitton anyway though you could get a backpack like that you know a lot of these fashion houses have their own backpacks and you know let's say you are a mom and you have little kids and you're constantly running after them or you know you just want to have that total carefree Feel, then a backpack might be a great choice for you. So again, you want to think about what you carry now and how you can kind of transfer that into your luxury purchase. Now, of course, 
I own different types of bags as well. You know, I have totes, I have crossbodies, I have a like wallet on a chain type bag. They all serve different purposes for me, but the main thing I'm kind of wanting to stress is that for your first luxury bag, and if you are wanting it to be something that you know you will really love, then you kind of want to stick to what you already know. You know, for me, I would never have gone and purchased like a Felici or a Chanel wallet on a chain as my first luxury bag because I was so used to using tote bags and those wouldn't be able to be used every day. So again, that also goes back into how do you intend to use the bag? Are you just buying a special occasion bag or are you buying something that you want to wear all the time? The next thing you have to think about, and it's pretty important when making your luxury purchase decision, is are you concerned with the resale value of the bag? Now, I personally don't recommend that you buy any bag as an investment. You know, if you're going to want to invest, I would look to other means, not luxury. However, certain fashion do have investment potential as in, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it, but basically you have to think, are you concerned about resale value or not? For me personally, when I buy a bag, I'm not buying it with the intention to resell it. However, it is something you do want to be mindful of because, you know, I've actually had this happen with my Louis Vuitton Clements wallet, for example. I bought that in January, I used it for about a month, and I ultimately decided that it just really wasn't fitting my lifestyle. You know, I much prefer to use my compact wallets, and I also prefer a snap button wallet versus a zippered wallet. So I did end up taking a little bit of a loss on that item even though it was like new. And that's just because, you know, that happens a lot of times with Louis Vuitton. I feel like it's harder to get what you paid out of the item unless it's like a very rare or highly sought after item or something that's been discontinued. So what you wanna think about is, are you concerned with the resale value? And if you are, then you might wanna to look to brands like Chanel or Hermes. Chanel and Hermes pretty much, I don't, like I said, I don't know too much about Hermes, but from what I've seen on like the retail or the resale market and from what I've heard, you can pretty much get your money back out of it. But I know for sure with Chanel, now I don't actually own anything other than a card holder, but from my research, my intense research, because I'm dying to own a Chanel one day, Anyway, they constantly are doing price increases. So if you are buying a classic flap or, you know, one of their classic pieces and you buy it in a classic color, then you are pretty much guaranteed that if you were to turn around three year, two years later and try to sell it, you could probably get at least what you paid for out of it, if not more, depending on the condition. So, you know, you have to think about that. If, if you intend to maybe sell the bag one day or, you know, you're not sure if maybe you might end up having to sell one day, then you might want to consider making a little bit of a larger initial investment and buying Chanel or Hermes. But now with that in mind, Louis Vuitton does really keep its resale value. You just might not get exactly what you paid out of it. Louis Vuitton does do their price increases. So if you were to hold on to a bag for five years and you kept it in pristine condition, you may very well be able to get what you paid out of it. For instance, my Neverfull MM was only like 1200 when I purchased it back in 2016 and now I'm pretty sure it's over 1500 Now, I don't baby my Neverfull and I have zero intention of ever, ever letting that bag go because that was my first one, my boyfriend helped me get it, you know, it has that sentimental value. I, I mean, I do think I could get probably close to what I paid out of it, but I would definitely take a loss based on what I've seen on the resale market. So, you know, and that's another thing that you should also do if you are concerned with, you know, maybe one day you might want to sell, go to these resale markets and look and see, you know, what are the bags going for? For instance, I've noticed that YSL really doesn't hold its resale value as well, and I feel like Gucci doesn't either. I have not done a ton of research into buying pre-owned in those those brands, but from what I have seen, you know, just from my browsing, they don't seem to hold their value as well. Whereas Chanel, when I look on the resale market, I pretty much can't find anything for below retail unless it's some like really weird color. Now, there is one caveat to that with Chanel. If you are buying like the seasonal colors and, you know, things that are not part of the classics or things that aren't super, super rare, then you might not get all of your money out of it. For instance, I know the boy bags do go for below retail. I mean, it's not a ton, but it is a few hundred dollars savings. 
However, you know, if I were, let's say you were to buy a boy bag right now and it's 5,300 and then five years from now, who knows, maybe they're selling it for closer to 7,000 by then. You probably could get your 5,300 at least back out of it, if not more, even though it technically doesn't have the same selling power as the classic flaps. So basically you need to consider that. If you're not worried about resale, then just go with whatever brand, whatever bag you want. You don't need to worry about the colors. You don't need to worry about the, you know, the classics or anything like that. Just buy what your heart wants. And that is kind of how I look at it. And if I end up buying something that I don't love and I have to take a loss on it, it's not that big of a deal. At least I got to use it. The way I think of it is I rented it for a little bit. That's kind of how I looked at my Clements situation. I lost a little bit, but it was basically to me like the rental fee for getting to use it for a month. Okay, so now moving on, this video I know is going to be long, but I really want you to have all of the facts in making this big decision. Next, another thing you want to think about is do you want to baby your bag or do you want it to be more carefree? So in my opinion, things like the Louis Vuitton canvas or even Goyard canvas, I think those, you know, you don't have to baby as much because they are canvas. It's not actually leather. This is not leather. Now these pieces are, you know, lined with leather or they have trim and leather. So, but it's not as much to worry about. Whereas if you get like a Chanel lambskin bag, you are going to have to be a little bit more mindful of that versus even like my Gucci Marmont bag, you know, when I first got that, I was so nervous because I didn't want the leather to get scratched. It is, it has held up very well. I don't think you have much to worry about, but it is one that I do take a little bit of extra care of because it is an all leather bag. So, you know, you want to think about your, again, you want to think about your lifestyle. This is a big, big thing. Think about your lifestyle. You know, like I said, are you somebody who's running after kids all the time? You have kids. You might want to look to something a little bit more carefree like canvas, you know. Now, again, it also ties into what are you using the bag for? If you are getting just like a special event bag or an evening bag, then you know what, go for an all leather piece and you know, cause you're not gonna, if you're not gonna be using it daily, then you don't have to worry so, so much about babying it at that point. Now at this point in my collection, I do have my Gucci Marmont and I have an emprunt leather bag from Louis Vuitton. Those are the only all leather bags that I own at this point. Everything else is canvas and I am a little bit more weary of my emprunt bag because I'm just so nervous of something happening to it. However, I do think that it is probably a pretty tough wearing leather. Whereas, you know, like I hear with Chanel lambskin, you do have to be really, really careful with it because it can scratch or get scuffs. So you just want to think about, you know, how much do you want to be worrying about your bag, you know, and then kind of make your decision from there. Then another thing you obviously want to think about is what is your style? How will you, you know, this also goes back to like, how will you be using the bag? But this is more so like, what do you wear every day? Are you somebody that is always dressed up? You always look glam or are you somebody that is more casual? Now for me, I am definitely more on the casual side. I'm usually wearing either like workout attire or, you know, t-shirts. I love t-shirts, especially for things that I love like concerts or TV shows. But, you know, I, I do dress up or like when I go to work, I do have to get a little bit more dressed up too because I work in an office. So, you know, it all depends on what your style is. Now, again, back to my earlier point, rock a bag however you want. You know, let's say you are a t-shirt lover like me, get the Chanel classic flap if you want to and you can wear it with that if that's what you want. And that's what I intend to do one day if I'm ever able to own a classic flap. I'm not going to shy away from it just because... I'm not always dressed up. I'm going to wear the bag the way I want to wear the bag. And if other people, you know, judge that, then that's on them. That's not on me. I'm going to use the bag how I want to. But obviously you do want to consider your style. You know, if you are somebody that's more casual, then, you know, you might want to gear towards some Louis Vuitton pieces or, you know, you just got to think about how it's going to fit into your style. And this also goes back to trying on the bag. My opinion is go into the store wearing what you would wear on a normal basis. You know, I've gone into Louis Vuitton in workout clothes. I've gone in in t-shirts and workout shorts. Like I don't always, I don't dress up just to go into Louis Vuitton or even Chanel, you know, I wear what I usually wear. And you know, when I'm in there and I'm trying on bags, that gives me a true feeling of how the bag is going to look in my everyday. You know, if I were to go in all glammed up and heels and all these extra things, 
that's not really a true indication of what my daily style is like. So I'm not getting a true picture on how the bag is going to work for me. So again, if you can and you can do get the opportunity to go in and try on a bag, then definitely do that. That can really help you make a decision. All right, and then pretty much my last point also ties into, you know, what what do you need to carry every day? This ties into like what is the intended use of the bag? You know, again, if you are using it as your everyday bag and you carry it around a lot, that's going to make, you know, you're going to eliminate some options. Or if you are using it as an evening bag, you know, again, that's going to eliminate some options. So that's pretty much all the tips I have. I really, really hope that this was helpful for you and maybe can help you think a little bit about what types of bags you want to get. And in my opinion too, I would also maybe make a list of a couple different bags that you're interested in. For instance, let's say you're between the Chanel Classic Flap and you're between the Chanel Boy Bag, right? Those are my two like dream bags is the Boy Bag and the Classic Flap. That's why I keep going back to those. But let's say you're between those two. I know they're very similar, but they do have a different look in my opinion, which is why I would want to own both. The Classic Flap, in my opinion, is more of that like elegant, like very classic piece, whereas the boy bag is definitely more edgy in my opinion. It's, I think you could definitely wear it a little bit easier in a more casual setting. Like I said though, if I get a classic flap, I will be rocking that thing no matter what I'm wearing. <laughs> I don't care if I'm going out on PJs, I'll be using that dang classic flap. But, you know, again, I think it can help you in deciding like what look am I going for? How am I going to use the bag, you know? All these things, it can help you to pick out a couple bags and list their pros and cons. You know, even let's say you're even between a classic flap and a Neverfull. You know, those are very, very different bags and listing out those pros and cons to both and how you could use each one is really going to help you hone in on your decision. And again, you know, for instance, let's take the Neverfull and the classic flap. Classic Flap is going to have a better resale value. You could pretty much consider that an investment piece. As long as you hold on to it for at least a year or so, if not more, you can get your money out of it as long as you take care of it. Whereas like the Neverfull, you might not get all of your money back out of it because the price increases are not as drastic as they are with Chanel, at least from what I've seen. Um, you know, but then you also might want to look at, okay, the Neverfull can carry a ton, whereas like the classic flap in like the medium size, it's going to be a little bit more limited. You're going to have to be more compact. You know, the Neverfull you can only carry on your shoulder or like in the crook of your arm. Classic flap, you can double up the chain and carry it as like a closer shoulder bag. You can wear it on a long chain and have it more, you know, like a longer drop. Some people can get away with wearing it crossbody. So these are all the things you want to ask yourself when you're making your decision. So I don't want to go around in circles for too, too long. I, again, I really hope that this was helpful for you to make your decision on what bag that you want to buy. If you have any questions or you need any help or any advice, definitely leave a comment down below. One of my favorite things is helping people find the right bag for them. You know, on some of my videos, some of you will comment that you're between two bags and if I can, I will offer any advice that I could personally give. And I, I just love when you guys tell me that you know, you have made your purchase or you helped or my video helped you decide. So if you need any advice, definitely leave me a comment and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. I'm also really trying to get better about Instagram. So if you want to, you know, follow me on Instagram, it's simply glammed XO. You can also message me on there and I will get back to you um, as quickly as I can. So anyway, don't forget to subscribe before you go if you like luxury or this type of content because I definitely will be continuing to post about it. It is like my passion. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.